We're continuing to see extraordinarily opportunistic attempts to push a climate change action agenda on the back of the bushfires. The Greens continue to disgrace themselves, as I said, but this morning some former fire and emergency services chiefs, in particular former New South Wales Fire Chief Greg Mullins, who has been outspoken on climate issues for many years, they called a media conference and demanded more climate action. For the first time ever, Sydney experienced catastrophic fire danger, a new fire danger rating that was brought in after the 2009 Victorian fires because fires are literally off the scale. Well, yes, this category was only created 10 years ago after Victoria's Black Saturday fires. It's a category designed to increase awareness to make sure that the public takes the worst fire danger days more seriously. So they call them catastrophic. So the fact it's the first time this level has been reached since it was introduced 10 years ago is not quite as dramatic as he makes it sound. This is showing how climate change is supercharging the bushfire problem in Australia. It's also supercharging the bushfire problem internationally. Well, again, this stuff is highly emotive and contentious. As we've shown here before, there have been summers way back in the last century when the same areas in New so northern New South Wales and southern Queensland faced the same bushfire horrors. The fires are terrible. The bush is very dry and on the back of a severe drought, one of the worst droughts seen in more than a century. But again, we have seen this before, long before human-induced climate change was even a factor. And as we know from the experts, the drought can't be blamed on climate change. This may not be what you expect to hear, but as far as the climate scientists know, there is no link between climate change and drought. Now, that may not be what you read in the newspapers and sometimes hear commented, but there is no reason a priori why climate change should make the landscape more arid. And if you look at the Bureau of Meteorology data over the whole of the last 100 years, there's no trend in data. There is no drying trend. There's been a drying trend in the last 20 years, but there's been no drying trend in the last 100 years, and that's an expression of how variable the Australian rainfall climate is. Now, since he said all that, Professor Pittman says he should have said no direct link. You can make up your own mind what difference that additional word makes. We've always had horrendous fire conditions in this country and we've always faced horror fire threats. And, of course, we always will. So if you really want to kid yourself that some form of climate action will cool our summers and end a threat Australia has harboured for millennia, then you have to wonder about the chosen targets of the activists. Why would people like Mullins attack the Australian government, which is responsible for just over 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions and is spending a fortune on reducing them, rather than calling a press conference outside the Chinese embassy, for instance, which generates 30% or more of global greenhouse emissions, almost a third of all the world's emissions, and is still dramatically increasing them?